What's up guys, welcome to your 45th Java tutorial where we're going to talk about polymorphism for a little bit. Um, I think we covered it a little bit uh, in a previous video, but I didn't really explain what it was or how we can utilize it. Um, so I'm just going to break it down a little bit more in depth in this tutorial. So if you guys haven't followed uh, this series and you're just watching this video, make sure you check out the very last video because that's the setup that we have here on the screen right now. Um, just watch that last one, you'll be caught up. And then uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new car that's going to be a Ford. So we're just going to right click, um, again go to new class, and we're going to call this one a Ford. And what we're going to do with the Ford class, we're going to let our Ford class extend our car class, which again is our abstract class. And then again we have to add the methods from the abstract class, such as uh, setup and all that stuff. Let's set up one more car just uh, for good measure we'll say this one is a Honda and then we're gonna allow the Honda extend the car class and then again add our unimplemented methods and there we go uh, we're good to start with polymorphism and how we can use it um, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna jump into our car class we're just gonna create a quick method called speak so we're gonna have public void speak um, with no parameters and what we're gonna do is a system dot out dot print and what we're gonna say is I am a car referring to the car class so there we go uh, now when we go back to our starting point class wherever that is uh, we can just say Toyota dot or the Toyota that we set up again in the previous tutorial now has the speak method and that will just print out I'm a car but you know that's kinda of bland that's kinda of boring um, and we're actually going to delete the tire size for that last one. So when we hop back to our car class, we can actually define what the speak method is, again, because it's not an abstract like we were talking about in the previous tutorial. It's just a void. It's not returning anything. It's just going to system print out, I'm a car. And also within the car class, I'm going to, you know, comment out this uh, line within the constructor that just says print, uh, because it's just going to be a waste of our time. And so now that we have this speak method for our car class, again, all of our other car classes, such as Toyota, Honda, Ford, they can all use this speak method, but they're all going to print out I'm a car. So what we're going to do is we're going to override this speak class for each individual uh, car and have it say I'm a Toyota or I'm a Honda or I'm a Ford, etc. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to right click and we're going to go to source and then override implement methods. And as you can see, under our car class, we have, again, the speak method and the miles per gallon method that we set up in the previous tutorial. We're just going to check the speak method, hit OK. And as you can see, we get this override method, which is saying, hey, we, we know that the car class or the class that we're extending has a method called speak, but we're going to override it and tell uh, the computer what we want to happen. Uh, for Toyotas, not just cars in general. So the first thing what we're going to do is we're going to delete this line of code here. Again, super is referring to the class that we're extending, or our super class, which is car, and then the speak method within the car. So it's just going to print out I am a car if we leave it in. Um, but what we want to do is we want to override it and change it to a system dot out dot print I am a Toyota. So there we go. Uh, now when we save this and go back to our starting point class, and now when we use this t.speak, again t is our Toyota object that we created, it's going to print out I am a Toyota. But let me show you the interesting thing here as we get um, into the Honda and the Ford class. Um, so first we're going to go to our Toyota class and I'm just going to copy this override speak method and paste it in to the Honda class. So we paste it in there and we're just going to change the text to uh, I am a Honda and for a Ford class we aren't going to override our speak method and I'll show you um, why in a second but uh, now we're going to go back to our starting point class and as you can see we defined a Toyota here um, just to, to create a new Toyota object but let's say for example we just want to set up three different cars we don't know what brands they are yet or anything like that so what we're going to do is we're going to set up a car and we're going to call this car uh, C1, C2, and C3 and again, we're relating to the car class, not um, not our subclass or our Toyota um, like we did here or Honda or a Ford. We're actually relating to the car class. And again, um, I showed you guys when we worked with abstract classes, we can't say a new car object um, because again, car class is an abstract class. But what we can do is we can just say car one is equal to Toyota 
uh, new Toyota, and this concept is called polymorphism because even though it's a car object, since our Toyota class extends the car object, we can just say, hey, we just want to create a new Toyota because we know it has a car-like thing to it, and we're just going to create a new Toyota even though our object is a car. And so we're going to do that for each of our cars. So we're going to say car 2 is equal to a new Honda. Um, and also car 3 is equal to a new, what was it, Ford? I think, yeah. So now we have three different variables. They're all car type variables, as you can see here. But they're actually set up to what they're supposed to be, such as a Toyota, a Honda, or a Ford. And the interesting thing is, we can do some system pronouns, so we're going to say C1, referring to our Toyota car, which is again a car object, but we can just say C1.speak, and uh, you're probably like, okay, I don't know what this is going to print out, because I know it's a car object, so it might print out I'm a car, but since we set it equal to be a Toyota object, like, I don't know what's going to happen, I don't know what's going to happen, is it going to say I'm a Toyota or I'm a car? And that's what we're going to, you know, uh, get to at the end of the tutorial. So we're just going to say C2.speak, and again, that's referring to the Honda, and C3.speak as well, and that's referring to uh, the Ford, uh, which again, the Ford class didn't have the speak method that we overrided. So let's run this and see what happens. Um, we have four statements. So this one's referring to the first T, the T-speak, the Toyota that we set up. Um, but then the next one's referring to the the car class um, or the car object C1 which is equal to a new to, uh, Toyota um, and then C2 which is equal to a new Honda even though it's a, a car object and then finally our Ford object that didn't have a speak method so so what polymorphism is is allowing us to basically say one object is equal to you know a different form of that object uh, essentially like you can I mean, it's it has multiple forms. I think is the actual definition uh, in Greek or something. I don't know, but um, that's that's what I'm gonna roll with. So even though we have a car object, and since Toyota is somewhat of a car, it's kind of you know in the form of a car, but it has a little bit different specifications. We can say that we want our C1 or our car C1 equal to a Toyota, because it kind of has that same mold or it kind of follows the same characteristics. And we can do that for each one of these because all of these classes extend the car class. So we can actually, when we're setting up a car object, we can also refer to you know the subclass, which is Toyota, Honda, or Ford, and this will work out fine. And then when we call our speak methods, it's going to know um, polymorphism is going to allow this object, even though it's a car object, to know that it's referring to the Toyota's uh, speak method, or this one referring to the Honda's speak method, or this one referring to the Ford speak method, but since the Ford speak method doesn't exist, it just referred to the car speak method. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. Um, I know polymorphism is just a big word and it seems like it should be complicated, but really it's not. It's just allowing us to you know, set up an object to be a different object of the same kind of mold and also to override those methods and we can use uh, you know, the method that we want uh, to occur essentially. So I know it's kind of a long tutorial and you guys are still probably pretty confused but don't worry about it too much. Um, the more you need it, uh, the more you'll kind of understand what polymorphism is. Even a lot of you know kids that get out of college, out of a Java class, they'll be like, or a course, a whole course, they'll still be like, I don't know exactly what polymorphism is. Uh, you know, I don't get why we use it or anything but that's my best explanation of it uh, for right now. And again, thanks guys for watching. Thanks for subscribing, giving thumbs up, comments, sharing this with your peeps, if you know what I mean. And uh, thanks again, guys. I definitely appreciate it. Have a great rest of your evening.